أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمد ونشكر نستعين ونستعدي ونؤمن به نوم ياد إلا فلمود لله شهد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله رسوله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All praise and adoration belongs to Allah the Lord of incomparable and inexhaustible majesty this is Allah to show his blessing, his mercy, and his prophet Muhammad Sallam. We ask him to extend this blessing to his household, his companion, his relative, and everyone that followed the virtual stating to the day of reckoning. I say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi And inshallah, today we shall be discussing, as usual, a, a new topic which is going to be um, Islam, Deen or Dawla. Islam. A comprehensive way of life. Islam, um, a complete way of life. When you say Islam, if you look at the name, it means peace, salam from the word salam. Islam is derived from the word salam. And salam mean peace. And this peace we're talking about is a peace that is all encompassing in no ramification. Islam mean peace. Deen wa dawla. Peace in religion. Peace in economic way of life. Peace in social way of life, peace in marital way of life, peace in um, all form of system, politically, and what have you. Peace. Okay. Islam is a peace. At the same time, um, Islam, as mentioned, is a religion that could only be traced to one source and the source is Allah alone no one else and what is the proof of this and I say that in the deen in the Allah and Islam in the deen in the Allah Islam the only religion with Allah is Islam Though Islam or Allah SWT, our Creator, acknowledge the presence of many other religions that human made or that man made a religion that are not divine. That's why, that's why it said that one led the Arisala Rasulah Bili Huda Wadin al the hero said is the one who has sent his messenger with guidance and religion of peace, religion of fact, so that it will prevail over every other religion which are what man made. But the only recognized religion with Allah is Islam. And this Islam we're talking about, it does not have its connection with any other um, influence, external influence. Like if you look at some other religion, like Buddhism, its inventor or the founder is Buddha. Or Christianity can be derived from Christ or Judaism can be derived from the Jew but Islam it doesn't have any connection with any other person that's why Allah has given it that natural name and Islam peace and 
other thing about Islam is that Islam is a comprehensive way of life. It is not only religion alone. It is a way of life. That is, and what is the proof of this? Allah said that Aliyom Akmal to Lakum Allah said today I've complete a religion for you. What mom to Ali and I perfect my favor upon you. Wow, ready to lack of Islam a dinner and I have peace with you as Islam for you as a religion. If you say that, and I say, Akmal to Lakum is a complete way of life, comprehensive way of life. That is why Islam is so outstanding, so special that even Rasulullah Rasul Muhammad Salam has no any personal um, quota, personal gain, personal influence in this deen of our Islam is also a universal religion. It is global religion, it's universal. Because if you look at it very well, you will get to see that Islam has this unique nature. And the uniqueness, the unique nature is that it has one language, language of worship, that is the Arabic language. When you're in the mosque, you say Allahu Akbar, it's the same language. The language we speak here in Nigeria is the one they speak in Ghana, is the one they speak in Kenya, is the one they speak in Mali, is the one they speak in Saudi, is the one they speak in Egypt, is the one they speak across the globe. The same language. And that is to tell you about the uniformity and universality of Islam. And the same Qibla. When we start in the mosque, we face same Qibla, same direction when we want to pray. It's talking about universality of Islam. When we look at the Quran, it's just one book across the globe. One Quran is what every Muslim who practice Islam must adopt. And the same thing goes with the Hajj, we, the pilgrimage, is also an indication to prove the universality of Islam that is very universal. So therefore, that is why Allah, once Allah said that in the Quran, He said that, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينَ فَلَا يُقْبَلْ مِنْهُ وَفِي الْأَخْرَةِ لَلْخَاسِرِينَ Whoever embrace or whoever follow another religion that is not universal let's say such person will be a loser and such religion will not be accepted from him that is why if you look at the Islam very well it's talking about it's it, it's it both it encompasses both human and gene is it a religion of the gene and the human so this is talking about the universality of Islam as a religion and Islam as mentioned earlier it's a religion that based its nature on what we call um, brotherhood the brotherhood of Islam is so huge is so germane that every person that come into Islam become one become brethren become um, 
a, a, a family. For example, and I say that in the Khwatun, every person who happens to practice Islam to the level of being a faithful person, and I say Khwatun. They are all brothers. Irrespective of your affiliation, your background, your connection, your affinity, no. Islam recognizes every individual, every person across the globe as one. This is one of the peculiarities of Islam. We are all brothers. And so we created you in we we created you both in male and female we make it into nation into tribe into different color into different languages that is only from identification that is for identification but what islam recognizes is acceptability of islam once you go, you go into the fold of Islam, you become one. You become the family, the big family. You cannot be a Jew if you are not born as a Jew. You even if we go to the Christendom, it's not the same as a Muslim. I can go into any mosque. I feel like praying and pray there, leave, take my leave. But when it go to Christendom, we have different faction where you cannot just go into any church to observe your praying because of the fact that the, the, the doctrination and the domination is different. The dominion is different. But in Islam, it's all encompassing. All encompassing. So Islam, as we have mentioned, it's a religion that is only recognized by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala alone, and we have proof across board. But this Islam we're talking about, it happens to be a religion and a way of life. It's not only a religion, it's a complete way of life. And how do we ascertain this? Because today we've, we've seen cases where people believe that religion is different from um, civic way of life, which is to be a separation. A demarcation between religion and the social way of life. No, Islam combined both. And the last two thousand Quran said, "The whole of his silly me kafa." Say, come into Islam wholeheartedly, completely. Once you're a Muslim, Islam absorbs you and your way of life. And that will take us to what we call Islamization of our social way of life islamization are uh, of ideology islamization of moral way of life islamization of everything as a muslim you must islamize your way of life according to what allah said in the whole of his It is only in Islam you will see where, um, as an individual, we'll be talking about religion. At the same time, we also need to look at the way of life alongside with it. For example, as a Muslim, if you want to get married, marriage is not a, it's not just a conjugal or um sexual or reproductive relationship is an ibadah 
is a form of worship because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Islam double into it. Islam discuss about it. Islam, you know, uh, <clears throat> exemplify the way a Muslim should marry. It told, it told us how to get married. It forbid fornication and endorse marriage. It forbid um, what we call abortion and endorse child bearing. Look at Islam. He told us that when we get married, um, is half of our religion. When we get married, if you have sex with your wife, you'll be rewarded for it. Because if you do it other way around, you're going to be sanctioned for it. Islam made us realize that when we have, when you have female children, um, you take care of them to the extent that those three daughters. Um, when man and God fearing, he said, it's a green card for you into paradise. Islam established for that as a, mar a married individual, when you spend on your wife, it is so that for you, you'll be rewarded for it. That is Islam for you. Islam made us realize the fact that as a couple, when you keep vigil in the night you wake your wife as husband you wake the wife and the wife will wake the husband it's going to be written for you as a reward reward for those who remember allah it's not it's a bit of fact that a husband wife when you marry uh when the husband died before the wife or the wife died before the husband there is uh, what we call ada there's what we call uh, al miroth Everything inheritance, the wife can inherit the husband, the husband can inherit the wife. That's Islam for you. Islam made it for that when the husband die, the wife can take ritual bath on the husband. Same thing, husband can take ritual bath on the wife. Look at this Islam for you. That is only on the marital um, issue. He told us if you want to marry as a husband, there are steps you take before marriage can be established. Islam also talk about um, what we call economic way of life. He told us to do away from riba, that is usury, interest, and embrace business transaction. Mudoroba, Musharaka. And what of you? This is Islam for you. It told us that if you engage in business and you make profit and it uh, and we, we, in halal source, from a halal source, you'll be rewarded for it. Islam made us realize the fact that Allah will question you on how you, you realize the money, how you spend it, where you get it. You shall give a full detailed account over them. That is on economic, um, economic uh, issue. It also that we should not transact on those Allah SWT as forbidden things like alcohol, like pig, like algar, business that is not. Um, open that is questionable. Look at Islam, it was we should not engage in um exploitation of other like Odin when you hold you hold materials so people are not assess cannot assess it. And this is Islam for you. Islam also talk about what we call spirituality. How you can be close to Almighty God? You establish fasting, you establish salat, you establish Hajj, you establish faith in Allah. Your spirituality, how you can, you know, be very close to your God. How you can be pious, how you can be righteous, so to live a complete way of life, a godly life. This is Islam for you. Islam also talk about what we call political 
affairs. Islam is talking about political issue, leadership. Leadership in the sense that as a leader, Islam makes you realize the father as a leader, you are the seventh leader. You lead and put people you are leading into consideration by giving them their due right. You serve people. You serve the public. Yes, public servant. You serve them to the extent that you don't eat if they don't eat. You don't clothe them if they don't, they don't clothe themselves. You are not comfortable. They are not comfortable. That is Islam for you. And we have seen the um, examples from the lifestyle of Rasulullah As a political leader in an Islamic terrain or is Islamic um, environment, you should know that you shall be called to question. You shall be called to account over every person you govern. There is accountability ahead of you. So you do it with caution, with fear of Allah's matter. Leadership. And we have seen a lot of cases where Rasulullah, you know, displayed this leadership spirit. Where he displayed this leadership valor for his followers. To the extent that people that came all the way from Rome to study the leadership of Rasulullah, Sallam, they thought that he has a palace, that he has a huge kingdom. When they got to Medina, they asked after Rasulullah, Sallam, and they told them, they asked them, where is your leader? Where is Muhammad? We want to see his palace. We want to see his kingdom. We want to see his office. How huge Germany uh, uh, is. They told them, them the entourage that came. That look at him. Look at him. He's sleeping under the, the tree on a tattered mat. He's just sleeping outside. The leader of the, the of the whole Muslim community was sleeping out, outside. And the people that were sent said that no, it means this person is a just leader. It means this person is somebody who is very transparent. To the extent that he has the comfortability and the rest of mind to sleep outside with nobody harming him. If we are opportune to see our leader outside like this, we have them killed. We excommunicate them. Said it means this it worth be a leader. That leadership by example. We have seen cases where somebody committed theft, theft, and people went to plead on her behalf. They went to Salam to please, you know, tamper justice with mercy, not to um, melt the require punishment on her so that's why i told them no it's not possible if my child is in this in her shoe my daughter is in her shoe my daughter commit the same thing i'm going to you know met same punishment on her so you, you don't plead for a, a criminal a leadership how do we do our own political affairs today in our country it's a jungle justice it's jamboree that is Islam for you. Islam also talk about what we call security. Security. Security of life. You don't kill. To the extent that Allah said that whoever kills, take a, a, a soul unjustly. He said, فَكَأَنْ كُتْلَ النَّاسِ جَمِيعًا فَكَأَنْ Someone that take just one soul on justice, like somebody that 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 killed the whole humanity. You don't take life. 
you don't abort, you don't kill. Any one life blood is sacred. That is Islam for you. Islam, all talk about the security of life is so germane to the extent that if you kill somebody in Islam, you must be killed. It's life for life. And nafs be nafs. And it's on also security of uh, intellect. Islam told us that don't bring things that we affect people's intellectual. People thinking for courting. People brain. Don't bring those things into the limelight. For example, cigarette, alcohol, party drama, all forms of hard drug. Islam forbid them. It declare war against them. But today, what do we see in society? Cigarette, alcohol, hard drug. It's all ramification. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. But Islam said no to hard drug. No to hard drug. Because Islam forbade it. Islam put a stop to it because it affects the brain. And when it affects the brain, when people, people take hard drug, they, mis they start misbehaving. You see them committing something very unimaginable, taking life, committing suicide, committing a lot of evils in society because what they've been they've been sedative, they've been affected by hard drug. Secret of life. Secret of life, secret of intellect, secret of religion. Security, food security. This is what Islam is talking about. It's a complete way of life. Security of the state. Islam wants us, a state, to have the harms that will protect the life of the citizen. You should have your forces, your soldier, your navy, your police. All agencies that we work for the security of people's uh, of the states that is Islam for you to the extent that Islam also talk about afterlife the afterlife when a Muslim die how do we take care of such Muslim from his properties we just just leave his properties Islam talk about inheritance it's very all encompassing inheritance how do we distribute this heritage among his children his wife his family members islam talk about it how do we do the barrier something about it how do we take care of those things he left behind Islam talk about it if he has if he has some debt to settle we have to do it there are two types of debt debt between him and other fellow human being and debt between him and his and his god Allah with ta'ala islam, islam talk about it Look at Islam. It's all encompassing in all ramification. It doesn't leave anything untouched. It touched every aspect of our life. That's why Allah said, with the whole of his silly me, kafa. But the table will go to what it should turn. In no luck, I don't know. That is Islam for you. Then at the same time, when we talk about Islam, Islam is giving us this um, understanding that without Islam, nothing again. Islam is the only way. It's the only way towards attaining peace in our life. If you want the peace to reign, in human life embrace Islam that is where there is where the peace is
So, therefore, when Allah SWT sent to the world the first man, which is Adam, he told him, he said, leave the paradise and descend to the earth. My guidance shall come unto you. Whoever follow them, my guidance, it will never panic. It will never know any hardship. And such person will live in peace. And the guidance is what? Islam. That Allah has sent to humanity to salvage us from all forms of bondage. And grant us that peace that we need in our life. So that's why for this peace to be guaranteed, to be ascertained, there are things we need to understand. Islam connects man with heaven. It doesn't leave man to just live. It connects him with both his life and the heaven. Now two connection. That's why Allah has placed down some principles what we call the five pillars of Islam and these five pillars of Islam they are so germane, so important that every one of us we need to understand them and put them as a complete manual with which we want to live our life so inshallah uh, I pray to last month I to forgive our shortcoming and I said this little as an out of a bad of a mouth. In the next video, we shall, talk, talk, shall, shall be talking about the, the five pillars of Islam and its comprehensive understanding. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.